Hey guys, so this week I want to do a video that's a little short and sweet. Uh, not at all the fancy editing, no property tours, just something straight to a point uh, that came up with a buyer that I met this past weekend. So I took somebody out to look at a home for a listing that we just put up on the market. And I'd never met her before, started chatting with her there, and it came up, you know, how long have you been looking for a home? And she said, I have been looking for a year. And so naturally, you know, I say, well, why do you think you've been looking for so long? And she says that it is because of price. It's price. Uh, you know, looking at the top of my budget, I don't want to overpay for a home. That was the big one. Not the first time I've heard that. And I just don't want to get into a bidding war. This video is specifically for people that are in that boat. And maybe I can give you a bit of a different perspective moving forward. You know, there are so many people who get hung up on just that purchase price and they don't look at the big picture when it comes to buying a home and all of the financial costs that come with that. Um, and, you know, I'm going to use a, a couple examples here. But before I do that, just disclaimer, this is not for people who are they genuinely cannot afford to buy a home or they are looking at the top of their budget and they just can't afford to get in a bidding war. This is just for people who are looking for a home and they are not pulling the trigger because they do not want to overpay. You know, I'm not going to pay more than market value. So I'm going to use an example here. You know, let's say $200,000 is your budget, which is a very fair first time home buyer budget. If you were looking at the beginning of 2020 and now you're looking, home prices in that price category in my market, which is, you know, Plymouth, Michigan, Northville, Novi, Canton, uh, you know, surrounding cities, it's gone up 12%. So that $200,000 home that you were looking at at the beginning of 2020 is worth about $224,000 now. It's a $24,000 bump, which is crazy appreciation. <clears throat> excuse me, appreciation, but you know, it's the facts. It just, it is what it is. And so now you either have to A, buy less of a home or B, hopefully your budget has gone up so that now you can afford what that home now costs. So just some food for thought, uh, you know, on top of that, that's just the purchase price. Uh, think of the fact that when you overpay for a home, that home got in a bidding war, you had to go above the asking price to get that home. When you do that, Another buyer in the neighborhood does it, and another buyer in the neighborhood does it. Those now are the comps in the sub, and you guys are setting the new standard, and that's how home values go up in general. So even though in that moment you had to overpay for the home, you have negative equity, if the market is that kind of a market, then all of the other homes around you are going to do the same thing, and then you guys become the baseline, and you don't have negative equity anymore. So keep that in mind when you're buying. Um, Moving beyond purchase price, I'm just looking at my notes here. So interest rates are a really big one. If you're getting a mortgage, you have an interest rate you have to pay. Right now, they're at all-time lows, and I'm actually even going to jump up from where they are now to go to 3.5% is my example. So sticking with that $200,000 budget, right? Um, you know, if your rate was at 3.5%, and rates are going to go up in the future. They don't really have anywhere else to go and it's normal for them to go up. Even in 2018, my interest rate was 4.75%. So, you know, it's not uncommon or unreasonable to assume that they're going to get back up to that number. So if your rate were to go to 3.5 to 4.5, 1 point, 1%, 1 while you were waiting to time the market right, um, that's a difference of about $100,000 100,000. Good Lord. That's a difference of about 100, 100,000 would be crazy, $100 a month that you're going to have to pay extra in just interest now. Um, also, over the course of 30 years, that's about $33,000 more that you have to pay in interest, where if you had just locked in that lower interest rate, you wouldn't be paying it. So, you know, you were focused on purchase price and not overpaying, but in the meantime, your interest rate went up. And now for the same home, same price, you're going to pay $33,000 extra. And that's one of those hidden costs that you're not thinking of. So again, just a way to think about the big picture when you're making these kind of decisions. Um, you know, lastly, I want to talk about taxes. So when you buy a home, you get 
a, a tax value that you're paying based off of the new assessed value of the home. And every single year, the county determines what the assessed value of your home is. And if values are going up in general, then your assessed value is going to go up. So when that happens, let's say that was a 10% increase over the course of a year that the county came up with for the assessed value. When you buy a home, you're locking in that value. And even if prices go up in Michigan, there's a benefit to being a homeowner where even if it went up 10%, yours only went up by a small fixed percentage. And that continues and compounds year over year. Um, <clears throat> so now, you know, because you waited a year, you're paying more in taxes for the same home. So you're paying more in taxes. You're probably going to pay more in interest. And now you're also paying more on the premium because you're paying a higher purchase price because you waited. Hopefully this is something that brings you value if you're in that situation. It's just another way to look at your situation instead of focusing on this. Focus on this. Make your decision based off of this. Buy if it makes sense and wait if it makes sense. So um, that's it. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody. Stay safe, and I will see you next week.